Hi, this is David Gronoski, host of A Neighbor's Choice and Things Hidden Podcast, as well as some of our other programs like Science and You with our Chief Science Advisor, Dr. You, and our Seed Oil Survival Series that we continue to have great fun unpacking the truth of nutrition. I wanted to give you a quick little message saying that we appreciate all the support that we get from our monthly contributors and our one-time donation supporters, and we'd encourage all of you to go to our website, a neighborschoice.com, click on contribute and make a monthly pledge today, whether it's a dollar, $5, 15, 20, 50, whatever you want to do, doesn't matter. Just be a part of building this new media project that we've developed to empower and inform, to inspire, to kickstart a scientific renaissance, an anthropological breakthrough and reformation in the church. All these things are possible with your support right now. So make that commitment today and help us keep doing the productions that we have. Thank you. Today we have a panel discussion on the topic of despair, which the dictionary says in Oxford, the complete loss or absence of hope. An example is, in despair, I hit the bottle. It's similar to words like hopelessness, desperation, distress, anguish, pain, unhappiness, lose or be without hope. We should not despair is the verb. Now, we have with us Shane Kennedy and Surat Dasgupta. It's great to have you both on for this discussion. Yeah, great to be here. It, it's great to be with you guys. So, you know, there are different conversations about despair. And it's, it's word sometimes, is this the same as suffering, first of all? Because a lot of Christians say Jeez. suffering is part of life, so buck up and stop despairing about despair. You know, it's not that you should run away from it, that you should rather double down and embrace suffering. So is there a distinction between the word despair and suffering for you? Well, I think there's a, like, there's a difference of uh, desiring suffering and uh, like de having to deal with suffering. So like, uh, I, I don't think, Jesus wanted us to, you know, seek out suffering for suffering's sake. Uh, unfortunately, like that's what a lot of people want nowadays. And uh, that's also what's being mandated. Uh, if you have observed for the last two or three years, uh, we saw that, you know, people are willing to give away their social lives. Uh, the the thing that makes uh, life so beautiful, you know, the colors and the wonders of the outside world and everything and uh, they're willing to give up that so that they can be safe and in comfort in their own uh, private abode so I, I don't think that's the kind of suffering that jesus indeed intended for us and of course there's the other kind of suffering which is very real which is what a lot of uh, uh, people uh, what a lot of people have are having to deal with uh, is that the suffering of circumstances uh, like for example, poverty or, you know, the suffering of, you know, uh, the struggle that uh, we uh, people are willing to uh, go through so that they can be somewhere safe, you know, like the struggle of, you know, starting, a, you know, a, a startup or a business or, you know, a, a challenging job or, you know, something that's uh, more akin to uh, an adventure. And I think that's the kind of suffering that Jesus calls us to uh, when he uh, sent out his apostles uh, into, into the world and to spread his message. And again, I mean, the, suffering is all, only made meaningful when uh, it's for Jesus' sake, right? It's for the sake of, uh, you know, preparing the world 
for the coming of Christ. So I think uh, this is something that's uh, that's very <clears throat> significant in my opinion. Wouldn't you guys say that that uh, that you know that suffering and despair the the two can happen at the same time, but obviously the two are different things. Uh, it seems that that despair is the is, is the is a result of of not having any hope, you know, of of not having uh, really of 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 you being your ultimate end. I I think I I think the more that you become the 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 end of your life in and of itself, I I think I think the more likely you are to suffer with despair, you know, and then and and then and then suffering on the other hand is something that that we all uh, deal with, you know, and, and we're all going to deal with varying amounts of it throughout our lives. But suffering is something that can either, I think suffering can, is actually a very, it's a very beneficial thing for, for, for our soul in, in the end, like what you were saying, sir, it, uh, because it, it helps to, to de it helps us to detach from, from, from those things around us that are, that, that, that are grabbing our uh, that, that are grabbing our adoration um wh which ultimately when when we're idolizing something of this world and and worshiping it and adoring it and sacrificing to it you know ultimately it kind of goes roundabout back to ourselves right you know um but you know it made me think of the sermon on the mount when uh, when you were uh explaining uh, when, when you were explaining your, your point of view, sir, because, um, you know, you know, Jesus says that, that the people that, you know, the people of this world that, that suffer, you know, the most, that those are in many ways, those are the people that he's the closest, that are the closest to him, you know, you know, the people that are in poverty, the people that are weeping, the people that are, that, that are experiencing, uh, suffering, uh, you know, you, you look at an older person as their, uh, um, in, in, in as as they approach their final years, and and people will suffer to varying degrees. Um, you know, when when someone's suffering, when they're going through pain, when they lose their vision, in many ways, that is a that suffering in many ways is a gift from God because it's helping. It's it, it's God mercifully helping them to detach from 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 the things of this world so that they can so so that they can so, so that their eyes can be unencumbered as they set their vision to heaven you know um but but yeah so i i i would say that that despair and alienation go hand in hand and that that we become more alienated the more that we fixate upon our selves as being the ultimate end of all things which is kind of the problem of of modern man today because you know just the at, at the place that we're in right now the path of least resistance is to fixate on ourselves as being the arbiter of all truth right and there's um i think there's a good mimetic component to this as well mm -hmm. because the more uh like you said the more we when we fixate on ourselves and the, you you can also see that as you know uh being fixated on on our desires right so when we are like uh very you know uh, where we uh, idolize our desires when we start worshiping it and when we do that we become uh, we start giving man uh, the place of god and uh, when that happens uh that increases suffering uh because that creates the kind of you know a conflict uh, that creates a kind of rivalry. And I think mm -hmm. Jesus uh, wa wanted us to alleviate that when uh, when he says, uh, imitate me just as I imitate my father. And the reason why Jesus wants us to imitate him is uh, because when we imitate someone who washes the feet of his disciples, that sort of... Uh, not sort of, but that completely, you know, eliminates the place for rivalry. Because how can you be, you know, rivalrous uh, or, you know, jealous or envious uh, with a person who you're supposed to serve, uh, whom you're supposed to, you know, wash the feet of? 
so that increases suffering you know that uh the that uh that closeness to uh the uh, another person and you know when you are becoming uh you know very very close you know more than you should be uh in, in the sense of you know being wanting to become that person then you know it creates suffering uh you know beyond uh, what we can comprehend and you know when we when we uh, get to that point it becomes very difficult to break off you know it can be compared with you know uh, having a very obsessive relationship you know uh, kind of you know like like a lot of uh, uh, relationship uh, you know stories that we see in media or even in real life uh, we can see the kind of obsession uh, instead of you know uh, wanting to create that that wholesome you know uh, uh, that that marriage that includes Jesus and places Jesus or at the top instead of uh, yeah instead of you know becoming very uh, very so close to another person so that it, it creates a push pull you know uh, a, an attraction repulsion like a magnetic thing where where if you get too close to your subject you are repulsed you know you are thrown back thrown away and then as you fall back away distance makes you attracted back right and so you come back and then as you get closer, you push back again because you see all the warts. And then from afar, you see the hair glisten in the sunlight and you get attracted. And you get up close again, you see the wart. You push back, right? That's what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly. And that's why, you know, mm. uh, this is not, uh, uh, perhaps this is not really exclusive to uh, Christianity in many ways, you know, because uh buddhism uh, mm -hmm. sort of uh, uh, attempts to address that thing and uh, there's a story in you uh, in the in the mythology of uh, buddha where like he's meditating under a, th a tree and there's a woman who's dancing in front of him and uh, he uh, he the, the reason why he becomes known as the buddha you know like like the enlightened one is because he he sort of gets an insight into the mimetic, uh, you know, attraction and re repulsion. You know what you just said, David, uh, that of uh, you know uh, how desire creates that kind of dynamic, right? So it creates obsession, and uh, like Gerard said, it, uh, the the line between adoration and hate is very thin. Hmm. So. Yeah. Jane, you were saying that the word despair connects to the word alienation. Um, let's look at the definition of alienation. The noun is the state of experience of being isolated from a group or an activity to which one should belong or in which one should be involved. Uh, similar isolation, detachment, estrangement, distance, separation, severance. It also can mean loss or lack of sympathy, estrangement. In Marxist theory, a condition of workers in a capitalist economy resulting from a lack of identity with the products of their labor and a sense of being controlled or exploited. Now, I think that's interesting. I went and looked at the etymology of the word alienation, and it says, <clears throat> this is late 14th century, alienation, action of, of estranging, disownment. Early 15th century, transfer of one's title to property or rights, like a lien, you know, like you have a lien as a title claim. Mm. Uh, from the old French, alienation, and directly from Latin, alienatinim, nominative, alienatio a transfer, surrender, separation, a noun of action from the past participle stem to make another's part with, estrange, set at variance. Uh, this comes from alienus, which means to 
of or belonging to another person or place, uh, which comes from alias as another or other different. From just Middle English, alienation also meant deprivation of mental faculties, insanity. Um, from the Latin, alienare, in a secondary sense, to deprive of reason, to drive mad. So it's interesting, you've got um, it's you've got deprivation of reason, you've got deprivation of mental faculties, insanity, you've got estrangement, disownment, and a transfer of one's title to property or rights, a transfer, a surrender, and somehow that's connected to social isolation. And that's interesting, that property rights thing there in connection to Marxist theory, I guess that's that's an interesting tie in there being disconnected from the fruits of your labor, right. And transferring your title, right. To somebody else. From a mimetic, yeah. from a mimetic standpoint, we could look at that and say, um, that one, cause you said that despair comes from this and it's connected to alienation. And a lot of people feel alienated right now. They feel like they don't have a title to themselves, right? They they lack the title to the claim on them on their self. Now you said that despair comes from believing that the purpose of life is to follow one's desires, and that leads to alienation. But at the same time, when you follow what you believe are your desires, you end up inadvertently being owned by the desires of others because the things that you want are truly not what you want, but rather what others model for you as desirable, right? And so to be alienated is to lose a sense of title to one's self because one is uh, caught up in mimet mimetic desire and not aware of it, right? So you feel alienated, you feel disconnected from others because you're wanting certain things, but you can't have it, which creates conflict, which creates schism, which creates all kinds of other things in society. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, it's like uh, alienation is basically like uh, the struggle to uh, to, to you know fight uh, or you know the, the denial rather of our uh, intrinsic nature and our intrinsic nature is that we are uh, imitative species human beings and uh, when you uh, and you know the past two or three years uh, during the lockdowns like i mentioned you know that uh, it's a, it's a denial of you know at the at the same time it's also like wanting it's it's also wanting to go ahead with this romantic notion that uh, you know that we have our own uh, unique desires or whatever you know that we have our own romantic you know that individual self you know, Girard calls it the romantic lie and uh, uh, when you alienate yourself your uh, i think that uh, and this is uh, like my own speculation is that i think there's a deeper part of you that wants to uh, imitate uh, someone who is uh, uh, who who you who can be uh, beneficial to you in some manner, uh, but that that uh, that inner part of you, you know, it's struggling to, you know, trying to grab onto some uh, magnetic poles or whatever you want to call it, and uh, it's not able to do that because you have essentially locked yourself in, and when you locked yourself in, there's like a conflict going on within you. Like uh, one part of you is saying, no, I want to be, uh, I, or rather I am, I am my own man or whatever, you know, like I am my own unique individual, uh, not individual in the sense uh, the Bible teaches us, but individual in the sense of, you know, like this uh, blank state Rousseau uh, enlightenment thing where you where you think, where everybody is like, uh, you know, gathering some information or whatever, you know, creating things uh, of his or her own accord. And uh, that's that just uh, doesn't exist because mm -hmm. we are very highly imitative of, of other people. And uh, alienation is why are we depressed when we are isolated or we, when we are alienated? It's because we are not able to 
uh, talk to other people. Uh, there is a part of us that's resisting, uh, you know, talking to or interacting with other people. And uh, this also uh, ties in very well with uh, with uh, with with a kind of you know sovereignty where uh, you know that you you are uh, in order to be prosperous you you are you have to be uh, kind of self reliant uh, but at the same time you know self reliant in a way which is serving t uh, towards other people. And I think that's uh, that's that's the good that God said when He created human beings is that our not our ability to you know uh, follow your own bliss or whatever you know like uh, uh, this this uh, prevalent notion that we have in modern society. Not that you know we have to uh, you know be our own you know we we can construct our own genders you know or willy nilly or you know do something that's you know totally uh, in the clouds. But rather, you know, that we have the ability to uh, imitate God's image and uh, create uh, his self, uh, his self-sacrificing nature, uh, you know, rep uh, reflect rather his self-sacrificing nature and his, uh, his, uh, his, his uh, ability to, uh, you know, give himself, you know, like uh, to, to his creation. And that's the if we fight that ability, uh, if we fight that uh, image of God within us, then that uh, creates uh, alienation and despair, in my opinion. <clears throat> well, sir, I think you're I think you're absolutely right. And I, I, I was just thinking as you were as you were explaining, if, if you think about the the trajectory that we're all supposed to follow in 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 the in in the world in in the the west and in the and the broader world as a whole you know what what we're told is we're supposed to go and be as productive as possible and collect as much money as we possibly can you know and just pile it up and make make as much as we can collect as many resources as we can um so so that we can you know separate ourselves from everyone else and and then and and then there's this notion too that's been kind of recent over the past couple of decades that not, not only are you supposed to build this big pile of money so that you can isolate yourself away from everyone else. So you can become a, a so you can become a God to yourself. Um, but, but your, your, all, your goal should also be to try to build a rocket ship so you can get, get, get yourself into outer space, you know, so that, you know, you know, and I think it stems from, from, from the idea that, that, that we are it, you know, that, 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 that there is no, there is no heaven above us. There is no hell below us that, that, that we're it. So we're supposed to, to, to embody God, you know, and, and if you go back and you look at, at church teaching, I mean, you know, you know, the, 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 the current teachings of the church, this goes all the way back to the apostles is that it, it's the question of what are you supposed to do when you amass a fortune? You know, and 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 what we're told today is build a rocket ship, try to get, get try to get the heck out of here. You know, try try to go into space or try to try to flaunt it. You know, charge the market price on your rental home because that's what the market says. That's yeah, the yeah, yeah. of a false god. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jack it up. You know, you know, or something. But but what what's always been taught in in Christendom uh, across the whole spectrum has been your w w with the fortune you amass you're expected to to put it back into society and and not just not just like reinvest it and charge interest or something but you're supposed to you're supposed to get give a large part of it away and and try to make everyone better off so that so that there is less suffering and i think this is the most apparent in 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 the great 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 old cities of the west you know the reason that they're tourist attractions today is that that those places vast amounts of 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 surplus wealth were generated by, by by the residents of those areas and and what they were expected to do not only by 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 the society by the church and by themselves was to put that money back into making the place that they live beautiful you know so so that so that everyone living there not just them what would all greatly benefit from it that's the reason people want to go and visit you know places like venice and and places like um you know like 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 Paris which I I I don't know if 
I, I don't think there are quite as many people who want to go visit Paris now just with all the crime and stuff there. But but you you guys know what I mean. You know, the uh, you know, in Spain and everything and and those cities are are very I mean, they're manicured and they're, and they're built to be a beautiful place, you know, to 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 go and look around and 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 to, and to enjoy the company of other people. But, you know, it, it it's all built. It, it was built by 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 well by people that had amassed fortunes that invested their fortune back back in favor of the pub, public good to make to make the place more beautiful and to make it so that so that everyone's stand you know economic standard of living would improve you know w- you know without there really being a, any expectations i mean yes they would have the biggest house or castle or, or or whatever on the block for sure you know but but and that's the way it was across all of christendom you know you know west and east but but as we have abandoned, you know, you know, Jesus Christ as King, we now, ju- now, now the goal truly is to alienate ourselves, to sit on top of our pile of money and only use it for ourselves. And then those people that are sitting on top of these big mountains of cash that they've built up and, and their, their little temporal empires, you know, they, they bark down from, from, from the top of there and tell the rest of us that we're, that, that we're selfish, that we're greedy, that we're racist and everything and and that that we're the ones with the problem that they're the ones that have it all figured out you know but but the truth is we all need to subordinate subordinate ourselves um to jesus christ as king um and i i i think i don't think that only makes makes day to day to day living in in whatever community we live in better but um i i also think it 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 fosters a much healthier a much healthier uh frame of mind for people yeah you know I, I i you know i don't think it's a coincidence that 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 mental illness has has exploded in in the past like 50 years you know the 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 more nihilistic we've become the 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 less the less meaning we view life as having the more mentally ill our cultures become i don't think that's a coincidence yeah and it's not just uh uh that it's it's kind of like you know we have been psyoped into believing that, you know, self-sacrifice, self-giving, as you've talked about, uh, Shane, that that's that's some kind of a lofty thing. And that's yeah. that's something, you know, just for, uh, you know, the uh, the 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 monk monks or, you know, the the people who are saints or something. Mm-hmm. It's very it's it's as practical as practical can be, you know, like you like you talked about, you know, when. When you say that uh, there's these communities that they they were able to prosper because they invested, you know, their not only their money but their hard work and uh, their uh, their ability, their skills, everything into making their uh, local communities uh, or into you know these uh, these awesome places where people from all around the world can come and visit. And that, uh, as a result, you know, creates even more wealth and even more prosperity for that place. Uh, you know that uh, this uh, famous personality Henry Ford, you know, controversial mm. as he is in certain circles, he he made that same uh, distinction that you were talking about, David uh, and Shane. That uh, you know that the 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 difference between you know a good business or a good you know uh, a startup is uh, like you said you know the the you wanting to accumulate uh, wealth and you know hard wealth and uh, wanting to serve your neighbor and uh, you know if you are if 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 your business uh, if your product is not there to you know make uh, another man's life better instead of you know making his life miserable you know that if it's not there to do that thing then it won't be successful it's inbuilt into nature right because uh, if you if you go about hoarding your wealth and uh, you know accumulating uh, you know building a mountain of gold or whatever if you go about doing that then sooner or later people are going to realize oh no this guy is a con artist like mm. he's 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 selling something that's not beneficial at all he's a big tobacco salesman or whatever you know big pharma salesman he's got just he's selling uh, snake oil and uh, people are going to catch on to that and they're going to you know his business is going to suffer and he's not going to you know make it big but the person who's uh, making you know a product who is putting something out there 
uh, that's uh, that's cheap and that's beneficial and that that makes your problems go away and that not only that you know it has the ability to you uh, increase your strength to wrestle with that problem uh, like a lot of motivational speakers do you know like they 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 encourage a person's self esteem and whatnot if if someone is doing that then people are going to you know uh, make that person even more successful and uh, society uh, uh, in general will become much better because of that person you're right yeah i'm looking at this story from dazeddigital.com i've never heard of them but it says let the tiktok girl post about her dying grandma and it's the story there's been bitter backlash over tiktok videos posted by model ali tate or ali tate cutler about her grandmother's decision to be euthanized but why shouldn't she talk publicly about it um she is a texas-based model she revealed her grandmother had chosen to die by euthanasia on tiktok earlier this week she explained that her grandma who she affectionately refers to as bubby lives in canada where medical assistance in dying maid made for people over the age of 18 has been legal since 2016. According to Cutler, her grandma chose to be euthanized after receiving a terminal cancer diagnosis. Cutler's videos on her grandma have since gone viral, viral with one clip of the pair getting ready to go out for dinner one last time, amassing nearly 13 million views. Naturally, there's been some backlash to the clips. Why would you publicize this? So wrong. One said, uh, um, but uh, you go on into the story and it's interesting because it says the, the author says, or going on to the quotes, um, she says stuff like, what are your thoughts as you move closer to the date? She asked her grandma in one TikTok video. She says, it's like the light at the end of the tunnel. And then, uh, what is the actual day like, Cutler asks. She says, the grandma says, there's an initial injection putting you to sleep. Then, once you're in a deep sleep, there are two other injections you get. But at that point, you don't know. It's painless. Um, the author says, it's refreshing to see euthanasia spoken about in such a plain, matter-of-fact way, especially in light of the sort of squeamishness towards death, which pervades Western culture and precludes such important necessary conversations about dying. Um, as writer Ashley Reese points posted on Twitter, it's actually good for more people to be more aware of end of life care. Notice they use those euphemisms, you know, <laughs> women's care for abortion, end of life care. They love that word care for things that are very violent and maybe you need to reflect on why you think, do they call prisoners prisoner care when they protest those uh, injections, by the way, for prisoners? That wouldn't <laughs> surprise me. Prisoner care. They don't call it that, do they? Uh, these things. That, <laughs> um, do you, but there's nothing wrong about this woman sharing her grandma's end of life journey. Evidently it would be pretty jarring for anyone to use a family's members, a family member's death for clout, but these videos really don't seem like Cutler gullishly capitalizing on her grandma's decision to be euthanized. Instead, they seem like informative, frank clips. They're seeking to demystify death and make the euthanasia process seem less alien. There's that word alienation again, which is a vital conversation to have given that it's still illegal in some places around the world. So what's wrong with uh, demystifying something? What's wrong with having a frank conversation about death. Isn't the Western world scared of death like this article's author suggests? I think they're more afraid of it than they've ever been. Why yeah, is that I, grandma embracing it then if she's afraid of it or whatever? I'm not talking about her as an individual, but why is this? Well, she, she like the rest of the culture, don't acknowledge that there is a heaven above us and a hell below us. You know, and that 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 Jesus Christ reigns as King at the at the uh, at the right hand of God the Father. Uh, you know, and and if I I I, th I think I think what we're witnessing with euthanasia 
it, which is begin it's they're they're start they're ramping it up in Canada, which which I I think Canada in many ways is kind of like a uh, test. It, it's like a test run, you know. That that's the the test population for a lot of this World Economic Forum uh, trash, you know. But you know, you know, euthanasia only makes sense if you believe that that life is meaningless. If if you truly embrace nihilism, you know, because because really at that point, if if you have a terminal illness and you're suffering, or or, or even if if you if you understand you have the potential to 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 you know you may be healthy right now, but you have the potential to to uh, to to become terminally ill down the road, then then it makes perfect sense for you to just end it now, you know, because because at least at least with your perception of of nothingness, um, at, at least in nothingness there is no suffering. You know, because 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 remember, those people when when you when you dig into what's going on inside of their mind, they don't even they don't even <clears throat> their frame of reference for for reality they they can't even make sense of consciousness. Who oh. you know you know you know you know they can't even oh. they can't even make the val they can't even claim in a valid way that 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 you that you sir it or you David or I Shane exist. You know, and and that and and that that and that my existence is a is a rational, um, operating assumption to make. For, you know, for for them, they they can't even do that. Uh, so I think euthanasia. I think it's just the beginning. I I think suicide is going going to become, um, normalized in our in our uh, in our society, and and I think globally wherever they adopt the, the uh the, the uh. Really, wherever they adopt material atheism, I think it's going to become normalized. Mm -hmm. And and I th I think euthanasia is 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 the way that that they're appealing to rational atheists to say, well, well, how can you deny someone the right to commit suicide if they have a terminal disease if they're suffering? Because remember, those people they have no use for suffering in in their frame of reference. But for us as Christians, we recognize suffering as being <clears throat> as being a value. You know, well, they believe in suffering for like their climate change cult and their uh, pandemic cult, where they would yeah, make yeah. people look at their grandma from the glass, you know, window and bang on the glass for months to let them, you know, weren't allowed to touch them, you know, and stuff like yeah. that. So they like suffering in a cruel. I don't know. It's it's such a strange. But I, I, but culture. for them, suffer for them, suffering is like a. There's like a a. That there, there's a resentment toward the existence of humanity, you know, that's in them. You know, you know, the, the, the reason that they're gleeful whenever they think about about like about it, about for the average person, it being too expensive for them to air condition their home if they live somewhere hot or or, or for or, you know, that, that they're gleeful toward toward it costing five times more to, to heat to heat your home in the winter if you live somewhere very, very cold is because I they have a deep seat. There's a deep seat of resentment toward humanity as being that that the earth is good and the animals are good, but humanity is the problem that, that humanity is the cancerous tumor on the planet that needs to be cut and ripped off. And that, that once humanity is ripped is ripped out of, out of reality, then, and only then will, will reality be, be uh, okay. But I, I think that's because they, they hate God because we have the Imago Deo, you know, well, they, well, they, they, they never had Satan going after the deer. Let's put it that way. You know, Satan never had a problem with the animals in the garden. Mm -hmm. He never, never went after the pigs and the chickens. You know what I mean? I guess he probably does in some ways, but he doesn't seem to have a big fixation on killing animals as much as humans. He really wants to wipe out humans. I'm looking at this other meme from someone what looks like multicolor hair, and she's got, uh, a despair face. We're talking about despair today. Mm -hmm. And she has a meme. It says, and it's, I guess it's on TikTok, a screenshot, I guess. So that's what this is a screenshot from TikTok. Things my parents have had to come to terms with their child choosing medical assistance and death, you know? And it's not, that's so sad, you know? Mm -hmm. That a little, it's just like a young person. I don't know. It looks like a teenager, maybe. It gotta be. Um, I mean, you think about, you know, the, the joy of parenthood and raising a little child and then what kind of a society produces a very legal, very 
sophisticated and celebrated way for a teenager to decide, yeah, when I turn 18, I'm going to die. And I think they're trying to get it lower than 18. That's what they're working on in Canada. It's a wonderful place. Another person uh, named, I'll just, I'll just say, this is a Twitter person named Charlie, identifies as they, them, uh, identifies as a queer chaos demon, trans, not, trans oh non-binary. Uh, she says, here's the thing you really need to grasp about MAID, that uh, assisted dying uh, suicide program in Canada. As a disabled person, terminally, terminally ill, but with the potential for decades if medicated and treated, I cannot gain citizenship in Canada. I am a burden on the system. However, I could move to Canada and be granted MAID. I will be denied an application for benefits if I intend to live in Canada because my health care costs more than they're willing to spend. But I cannot be a citizen with health care access in Canada outside of paying for all my care privately. However, if I move to Canada, become a citizen, and apply for MAID, I will be granted that death. I more than meet the extremely concerning super loose criteria. This is eugenics. Sick and disabled people can't get treatment but can be killed. It's a means of killing us all. I firmly believe in making suicide legal, as in not penalizing people legally for attempt, and in assisted suicide. So she's, or whatever, I get they, them, is what, what I don't know what this is going on, but she wants, she wants to say that she's dogmatically in support of assisted suicide and legal suicide, but it can only exist in a system that offers alternatives to live. The U.S. states with legal suicide aren't doing this either, but a national program is terrifying. When Trump was elected here, we immediately looked to Canada. All our lives, we've heard about the Great North was such a haven in comparison. Learning the reality, hearing them call me a burden and say we wouldn't be welcome was devastating. Made made it was much worse. So, this is an interesting take. We get to look inside the worldview of someone who really accepts the establishment worldview very nicely, but still is a little bit worried about some of the things going on here and that, you know, she's just saying, look, if they're not going to provide health care for me, but they want to let me be killed. Come on. She's like, I want to allow people to be killed, but I only want them to be allowed to be uh, legally killed and euthanized if you also provide, I guess, like, you know, full universal health care for all their programs and problems, right? Interesting. Well, what we are seeing here is kind of a, an inner conflict. And what I mean by that is, uh, David, when you were uh, going through these stories, you know, and these uh, people's tweets, uh, there are two things that I'm observing. Uh, the first is uh, that uh, this... Uh, this tendency to tap out, right? And this tendency to, you know, uh, just, you know, there's nothing, it's, it's like hopelessness, uh, like you like you mentioned. They, they, they These people are not seeing any hope in the future and they just want don't want to, you know, go ahead with it. And uh, which brings me to the second thing, which is uh, why are they losing hope in life? I mean, I'm, I'm, trying to be very sympathetic to them here you know you know it's very easy to uh scapegoat uh these people instead of you know having uh you know just just dissecting you know what's what goes on in their mind so when you th that last story david when you talked about uh that that establishment uh narrative narrative uh you know obeying uh I don't know who she is. It's a liberal or whatever, you yeah. know, like he's subscribing to the, the, the establishment narrative. But at the same time, there's a conflict in her that, you know, this is uh, there's no, you know, access to health care and so on and so on, you know. So uh, the reason why, you know, this is this is kind of an indictment on uh, on our medical system as well. I don't. I don't think that it has entirely to do with uh, that person's, uh, you know, feelings. It's uh, it's like you know society in its failed paradigm of you know, uh, you know, trying to abide by this ancient uh, pre-Christian notion of you know that you have to suffer to get well. Uh, this kind of notion, right? It's like uh, you have mm -hmm. to you have you have to sacrifice, you know, to get well. Uh, something like that. It's that. It's that 
our entire medical paradigm and uh, you can see this in big pharma too like it's built on you know just uh, just making people suffer it's built on making them uh, dependent on very expensive uh, pharmaceutical products and when when someone like it's uh, when you talk to a cancer patient uh, who is who who is suffering from you know a very late stage cancer and uh, you're giving them the choice of you know going through something like chemotherapy which uh, which really gives them a lot of pain and you know that person doesn't see like if if he he or she thinks if if i if i if to live i have to suffer 10 times more than i i have ever you know suffered in my life so far then uh, what's the point you know why am i trying to you know continue and uh, it, it it's a double indictment it's a, it's an indictment on our on our mentality and on on the system that we have created this uh, very sacrificial system that that says like we have to you know cut off parts of you and you know your limbs and you know so that you'll 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 live in a in a handicapped way or in a special needs way or whatever you want to call it uh you know like it, there's no there's no good way to you know cure human beings and i think that's uh that's very important because that goes hand in hand with our uh with uh, with our forsaking of Christ from from our from our civil you know public sphere is when you take Christ out of uh, your everyday uh, activities, including you know uh, the medical activities, you know, and uh, healing healing vocations. Then uh, the very meaning of healing, you know, it it is twisted. It's it's uh, distorted. And healing uh, doesn't mean healing anymore, right? Like you said, David. You know, care. They like to use these words, care. Mm -hmm. So what's uh, like? It's uh, the actual meaning of that word has gone away, and that's because you know, uh, that's because uh, the West, West in general, has mm -hmm. uh, refused to acknowledge what the thing, the very thing that has made them so successful, that has made them so prosperous. It, it is. Uh, it's like it's like having this envious you know mimetic uh, bitter attitude towards uh, the, the very thing that's making it very, that that has made it very great that has made it you know progress so much in medicine and technology you know prior to uh, christ's crucifixion uh, pharmacos had a very different meaning in the in the greek term uh, the meaning uh, is very uh, very you know human sac it's very related to human sacrifice you know expelling of uh, someone uh, to make uh, the entire thing better and i think jesus when he's crucified uh, when he was crucified and then resurrected he changed that he redefined that into saying that uh, and of course his miracles uh, goes along with this too you know he he healed people and when he healed people he did not make them you know go through a lot of pain or anything like that there's no indication in the texts that says uh, you know when he healed the blind man, oh no, the blind man had to be bedridden in, uh, you know, for ten days, and then after that he finally regained sight. No, he did it instantly, and that I think that by doing these things, Jesus is saying that this is the way healing is done. It's done in a way to you know to serve your neighbor and to give him hope, you know, rather than uh, deprive him of hope. And it's uh, there to, you know, make his life, you know, more, so much infinitely much better in the, in a way, in a sense, like we are going back to uh, the, the Garden of Eden before the fall actually occurred, you know. I think, I think a lot of uh, successful ritual sacrifices were kind of like assisted suicides in the sense that the candidate for sacrifice mm -hmm. would need to be conditioned to believe that it was his, it was their duty to participate in it. It was kind of like their action in some sense, their agency was surrendering to their fate. Right. And so it's this idea of like, you know, the pharmacos candidate who's the handicapped guy selected for the Greek ritual of expelling him out of the community off a cliff. You know, he's probably got himself, he, he may be, you know, you know, I'm sure there's wrestling with it, 
But if he's been a successful candidate in terms of the societal shaping of his emotions, he would have a resigned fate. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to go meet my lie at the end of the tunnel. I'm going to do my job to propitiate the gods that to bless this community. I've been selected as a candidate for this special role, you know, I mean, or, or in the flip side, he could be experiencing the feeling of I'm disfigured because gods hate me. And I am, I am uh, cursed with a fate of living death because the gods don't want me and the community doesn't want me. And they're not going to give me a favor at the table. They're not going to give me good food. And this is my fate is that I have to die. And the community is just going to assist me in that process by throwing me off the cliff. So the gods will love them because they're not me. Right. And so, you know, you can imagine that these voices that these people are echoing on social media reflect the voices of the victims of sacrifices mm. uh, who have bought into the different manifestations of ritual sacrifice from the perspective of the victim. One being, hey, you know, because the sacrifice rituals around the world look differently. Sometimes you're a feeling of, hey, you've been chosen. Go up to the mountain. And it's like, wow, this is my duty. I'm doing it for the team. And then there's other ones where it's like, no, you're horrible. You're, 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 a, you, you know, you're a despicable uh, poison. You know, you're, you're, you're handicapped because God hates you or all these other things that are put on their narrative, you know, and then they accept that. Yeah, I guess, you know, God's hate me and that's why I am the way I am. And so, you know, you can imagine this is the same narratives. That the, I mean, it's not imagining this is the same narratives that we hear from these individuals, unfortunately, you know? So the question is then uh, why and how do we rekindle hope and not to just leave it with, you know, the problem. And I, Shane, Shane I really appreciate you pointing out, you've got to follow Jesus and, and, and share it too, but we have to figure out how to give this concrete incarnational action points, right? Because Otherwise, it's just another ideology. The average Western mind hears that. And says, okay, you're selling me again. Okay, so that's your big other. Uh, somebody sells me Sikhism. Somebody sells me uh, Republicanism. Somebody sells me wokeism. Somebody sells me uh, Marxism. You're selling me Christianism. Here we go again. Okay, so I get your package, and that somehow you're present. You know, I, I buy into the package of what you're selling me, and. And that somehow makes me have hope magically. People don't buy that anymore. So let's give a little bit of tangible uh, incarnation to that point. So, so at a, at a, pra at a, at a very, very practical level, the, the thing I would say is, you know, this whole push to central, to centralize economic planning and the push for globalism, which, which with certain things, globalism is good, you know, like for, 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 for wheat, you know, for, for oil, for coal, for, for these, for these, um, for, for, for items that are, that are very, that are scarce in most of the world and, and in large parts of the world, it, it's really good to commoditize those things, you know, to, to, to make them as widely available to as many people as possible. But I think when you get right down to it, when we're not talking about raw materials, when we're talking about items, um, you know, it might be physical goods or it might be things like healthcare, uh, you know, something that's really a service and physical goods. I think it's critical that those things are are governed and owned as locally as possible. And the, you know, the I, I guess I guess the difference. I, I guess what I would say is you're going to get better healthcare from from a local doctor that's living in your community that knows you and you know them, than just going to some to some franchised out walk in clinic. You know, you know, you're you're gonna buy better fruits and vegetables from from someone at the farmer's market than than going to to a grocery store. You know, and 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 the the thing I would say is the common denominator between those two things is 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 those are both relational. You know, human beings, we're relational. You know, when the Lord was born of the Blessed Virgin, he he did that because because he was relational. Uh, you know, he, you know, he when 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 Jesus incarnated as a human being, he didn't just show up like some. We're talking about alienation. He 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 didn't show up as just some alien. He didn't just like beam down and say, "Here I am." No, he he. He was born of of a mother, you know, of 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 the, the of the Theotokos, right? And the reason for that is is that he um that that human beings are we we are relational. You can't be a human being 
w w w without being relational. And I guess the thing I'm trying to say is that when we when we turn healthcare into a centrally controlled franchise, um, that relational nature you 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 divorce the transaction from from relationship, you know. And and that's one of the reasons I say if if you want to get like the, if you want to get the best quality produce or or handcrafted stuff possible, go to a local farmers market, you know, because because those people have to encounter you in person, and those those people that are that are growing the the uh, that are growing the produce, or, or or that are selling you their wares, they're gonna have to encounter you again and again and again, and and the thing is, there will be shame if you come back to them and you say. You say, "Hey, that uh, that apricot I got from you last week—it really wasn't all that good. You, you, you know, you you sold me a bad apricot. You know, th there's a level of shame there. Now, if you buy a bad apricot at some big national, uh, you know, uh, uh, food chain at some big national, some supermarket, the people running that supermarket, the people that own that supermarket, they're they don't really care that much if 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 they sell you a bad apricot." You know, it, it's it's not not that big of a deal to them. There, there's there's not going to be there's not going to be a level of shame felt. You know, in in the same way with medicine, if 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 you have a relationship with a local doctor, you know that that you're paying that doctor for his medical services and and he's rendering them to you. There's a relationship that's pair that that's intertwined with that transaction. You know. If that doctor prescribes you a bad medicine and you have a you have an allergic reaction to it, that doctor is going to feel shame. Mm -hmm. Well, whenever you come back to him and you say, "Doctor, um, you gave me a bad medicine or you misdiagnosed me," there's going to be shame associated with that. But if you go to a, go to some random walking clinic, you don't know them, they don't know you. It's some franchised organization. Um, if if they render you a bad diagnosis or prescribe you a bad drug, they're not going to care. They're probably not going to see you again. You know. You know, it, it's a transaction divorced of relationship. And, and and what I think we need to do with with the economy, technology, and and all and all the different ajis or or, or onomies, you know, that, that that we can list, I think we have to bring the relational aspect back into it because I think in the West we've separated relationship from the transaction. And that's a big problem. It it turns it turns the it it turns the human life into a commodity. You know th that's why that that blue haired woman on Twitter, what we you know had, has you know it, you know has come to the conclusion that the world's just better off without her. You know she doesn't view herself as being an incarnational being whose life matters and that 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 she that she's going somewhere. You know she just views herself as just being a a, a burden. She's just another number in the in the uh, aggregate. In the and aggregate death, of the human commodity, and death is the domain of her existence. Yeah, because you're operating unto the reality of death being your final statement about your existence, right? Yeah, and uh, David, when you uh, when you ask that uh, question, when you pose that question, you know, okay, like, are you guys trying to sell me another product or? Uh, you know, uh, people are selling uh, people uh, republicanism or whatever, you know, and now you're selling me something else. Well, the thing is, like, I think we have been psyoped into the state of mind where we have become like consumers, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of like givers. And, uh, you know, instead of uh, like this this in enormous uh you know structure uh, that we have created uh, as you mentioned shane uh where there's no accountability and you know where there's no shame you know uh checking the 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 unethical practices of someone who may sell you a uh, a very bad product or you know a very bad a thing that have caused you uh severe harm uh this gigantic structure has eliminated a lot of our uh yeah yeah it has eliminated a lot of our uh you know uh, perception or mindset rather you know that we have the ability to 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 do something like i, I don't know if if america has still has this going on these days but you know i i saw this uh in, in this lot of the old videos or, or old movies 
where you have the kids uh, you know selling lemonade in the lemonade stand i don't know if, <laughs> if uh, well, well well sir you know that that used to exist but but that's largely illegal now <laughs> oh wow <laughs> yeah the war on lemonade was a success <laughs> <laughs> oh no i yeah that that really speaks for itself it's the only right? war in america ever won apparently the war on lemonade <laughs> Lord have mercy. So yeah, I mean, when you when you go after a kid uh, who says, uh, you know, I just want to make a you know nickel for from selling a lemonade, uh, you know, that's 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 like a microcosm, you know, of uh, the war on drugs or the war on everything, you know, like the war on health or whatever the war on cancer. It's it's really like uh, this this thing you know like the the war against lemonade that's the first step uh, you know a, ch- a kid comes up against when when you know and th- th- you, you can see how it's uh, a a person has been indoctrinated or uh, you know socially engineered from from the day that he or she is born uh, where like they they saying no no don't do anything of your own self you know don't make money you know don't sell something that that tastes uh, that's very delicious you know that other people will will like you know in short you know you don't you're not you're nothing you have uh, no ability to make other people happy you have no ability to you know uh, quench another person's thirst you know and uh, you are worthless and uh, they will come when you know we will uh, the society will think you know that uh, this person is like outlived his uh, very little potential whatever potential he had and you know go ahead and you know with assisted suicide it's it's uh, it's it's the final nail in the coffin of a human human beings uh, you know like you mentioned Shane like uh, the image of god in a human being it's like they it's like they worship the and the humans are worshiping mimetic group feelings, you know. Emotionalism mm-hmm. is now the god, which is just mimesis run run wild because it's like, oh, I took these garbage products, but I feel good about it. So don't tell me that it's not working because that's gonna ruin the collective emotion that I'm feeling together, right? You know, and so it's the emo- it's the deification of emotion and the feelings that we get about certain things that somehow can't be questioned. But I wanted to leave with this uh, passage from uh, the Gospel of Luke, which is chapter 1, verse 46, and we'll leave it here. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the Lord's greatness, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, because he looked upon the low estate of his slave. For see, henceforth all generations will bless me, because the Mighty One has done great things to me. And holy is his name, and his mercy is for generations and generations to those who fear him. He has worked power with his arm. He has scattered those who are arrogant in the thoughts of their hearts. He has pulled Dinas down from thrones and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has given aid to Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy just as he promised to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed throughout the age. Amen. Amen. So she had hope, and she didn't have despair. She was alienated, and she overcame it because of the circumstances in which she had to go through that birth. She was alienated from her society, and she overcame it with that hope because she trusted in the way of God, right? Yeah, and it's like uh, it really drives home the point. The 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 Christian story is the only story that gives us hope in this world. No other story can match it in that regards, or in uh, in any other regards for that matter. You really have hope when you uh, when you uh, become a child of God, when you start imitating uh, uh, Jesus Christ. And when you start imitating Jesus Christ, you are that kid, you know, who is going to sell lemonade and, you know, make other people's lives better. And uh, you are you are that, you know, that genius artist who is going to create the, the, you know, groundbreaking novel or the groundbreaking 
uh, that painting that changes everyone's life or that movie that every that becomes a blockbuster hit and that you know mm-hmm. sweeps the academy awards or whatever and you know changes the world uh, the, the world's perception you are going to become that uh, you know uh, that scientist and uh, that in- innovator who who is out there you know wanting to uh, change the way we perceive uh, the world of atoms and uh, in short you'll 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 be the that person who is giving hope to your neighbor and when you when you reject christ you know whether you reject him in the cultural aspect or in in the societal aspect or in the religious aspect the the end result is always going to be the same it's going to be hopelessness so yeah that's a wonderful uh, passage to really illuminate that point that we are making here is that uh hope is it can be regained and uh, the way it's going to be regained is uh we have to decide to follow jesus christ and you know he is the only role model that's worth imitating no one else is you know so yeah. Well, thank you guys both for joining me. It's been a great talk with you. Thank you for having me, David. Take care. Pleasure to be here.